Hello, hello. I guess this is it. This is the beginning of an era. Welcome to the very first episode of the Red Lemon Show, brought to you by illustrator and writer, occasionally, Alex Mathers. And yes, it is pronounced Mathers and not Mathers. Some of you do get that wrong. But uh, welcome aboard. Thank you for your time. Thank you for investing in this um, this this brand new podcast with someone who doesn't tend to get their voice out there very much. I'm usually to be found tapping away behind a screen, writing articles for redlemonclub.com uh, and Medium and other places, uh, and also drawing as many pretty pictures as I can for places like Instagram and, and, and clients around the world. So this is it. This is the Red Lemon Show. Uh, let me let me just describe the scene for you, where I am and what's happening here. So I'm sitting on my <clears throat> on my desk in my little apartment in Bangkok, Thailand. If I glance over to my right, I see that the rain is is absolutely chucking it down. I can barely see see out the window at the the skyline that's normally there, but it's completely white now because the the rains are coming down so thick and fast. It's uh, monsoon season, so we tend to get lots of heavy rain for a good hour every day, which is nice as it cools things down a bit. It's very hot here, and that's something that I haven't yet uh, properly psychologically dealt with, but I'm sort of getting there. But I've been here for two years, really just because I, as an illustrator and someone who only needs really a tablet and a laptop to, to do the work that I do, have taken advantage of, of being out here and um, doing client work across, you know, through the, the magic of the internet. And have, you know, I was actually going to pass through Thailand and go to Vietnam again because I was there for a few months back in 2014 <clears throat> in Ho Chi Minh City. Loved it, loved it to bits and really wanted to go back. And I was in London after that and I decided, you know what, I've got itchy feet again. I want to go traveling. I want to, want to combine travel with work again. So I went with the intention of going to Vietnam, passed through Thailand, thought, you know what, I might give Thai I might give Bangkok a little bit more of a, of a chance. So I... I went, I went on to Thai, uh, Vietnam for a bit and then I decided I'll go back to Bangkok and I've, I've been here ever since, uh, much to the sadness of my mum who, who misses me dearly. Uh, but here I am, it's still raining and I'm just, I'm just going to go for this. I haven't got a script and if I'm talking too fast, please mention this in the comments or wherever you want to note this down. I'll, I'll bear that all in mind. I'm going to use this episode to um, give you more of an idea of, of who I am and why on earth you should listen to someone who claims to... Um, want to start a podcast called the Red Lemon Show? Um, yeah, so let, let's 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 do that. Let's let's talk about who who I, who I am in a little bit more detail, if you can bear with me, and then <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit about the kinds of stuff I want to cover in this podcast and why why I think the podcasting platform is a really interesting opportunity for the kinds of stuff that I like to talk about. Um, First of all, why the Red Lemon Show? Well, for those of you who don't know me from Red Lemon Club, it does sprout from that brand name, which I set up about 12 years ago. Red Lemon Club is a blog where I write about productivity, motivation, uh, marketing, social media, anything to do with helping particularly creative professionals uh, make more of an impact in the world. And... and um, find their voice and, and, and make use of their uniqueness in a way that, that is expressive and energetic and, and, and motivated, if that makes any sense. I mean, it tends to deviate quite a lot, and I've changed the slogan of the site many, many times, and I've written about a wide variety of stuff, but it tends to focus on the sort of self-development um, productivity angle. At least that's what it's doing right now. Um, so that's been going for about 12 years. The Red Lemon Show I thought would be a good idea because, I mean, in terms of branding, what, what Red Lemons really is about, and the reason I started Red Lemon Club in the first place um, was, and, and in terms of the name, uh, Red Lemons is really, um, it's about standing out. It's about, you know, a, a fruit that is unusual. So it's about making the most of what makes us unusual, following our, our weird and just kind of getting ourselves out there, which is what a lot of creatives sometimes have trouble with, and um, especially in terms of marketing. So Red Lemon Club was really um, focused on the sort of marketing angle, and it was a means actually to promote my very first ebook, which I decided to write when I was about 23, 24. I'm 33 now, and um, I wrote this book uh, just over 10 years ago about um, all the stuff that I had been learning as a, as a self-taught illustrator. 
in terms of marketing. And Red Lemon Club was going to be a, a very short-term blog to promote that book, but it's turned into a sort of lifelong passion project, if you will. And it's been lots and lots of fun. It's sort of, I've had my ups and downs with it. I've had moments where I've just sort of left the blog completely dead and, and other times where I've been writing furiously with all these ideas that are coming out. And I just think it's about time that I came out with a new, like I sort of diversified the content a bit into voice. It may very well turn into video, but I, I don't think I'm great on video. I think I'm better suited to uh, talking like a maniac on, on a podcast, like I, like I do so well when I've had a couple of coffees. So again, if I'm talking too fast and, and, and sort of mumbling a bit, then let me know. But um, this, this the, my speaking style is probably hopefully going to improve as, as time goes on. But the, the plan is for me to get at least, I'm just, I'm just going to make this up right now, I'm, at least three podcasts a week. So I'm going to, I'm going to go for it to a certain extent. This will mean that my writing will have to take a little bit of a a backseat. Either that or I'll have to work twice as hard. And I I don't mind. I'm a bit of a workaholic. I want to make sure that I get a little bit of lifetime in in there as well. But I'm really excited about this idea of a podcast. And it gives me an opportunity to get a little bit more intimate with all of you guys who who follow, as well as um, find a way of connecting with some, some new folks as well. So let's go back into the sands of time then in terms of who I am, right back to the early days. And so I I was quite lucky growing up in terms of being able to see a lot of the world. My dad was a diplomat and as a family, we'd follow him around jumping from country to country right right from when I was born. I was born in Denmark, lived there for a couple of years. I'm I'm actually English in case uh, some of you are wondering, Uh, not Australian, Uh, from... um, from the UK. My mum is from Austria, actually. I'm, I'm half Austrian. My dad is from the UK. But I was born in Denmark, lived there for a little bit, jumped around loads of times. Me and my sister, my mum and my dad uh, would go on po- various postings around the world. He, he'd be working for the foreign office. And we lived in places like Austria, uh, London, Barbados, Jamaica. You jealous yet? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sweden, lived in Iran. Uh, where our house got hit by a missile, which was interesting. And um, so that gave me a very early, unique introduction to various cultures around the world. And it was, I was very fortunate. It was, it was difficult on the, other, on the other side, the other flip side, in terms of having to constantly leave friends and start fresh each time. But I think what happened through that experience was that I picked up the travel bug and, and um, I... I always, I always have that sense after like a year or two living in the same place of needing to move on somewhere. So that, that might have been where that was picked up. And we'll see whether that affects me living here in Thailand. For now, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, so did a lot of moving about. Went to boarding school when I was 13. While my, my, my family was living in Sweden at the time. <clears throat> and uh, the, first, the first year of boarding school in, in the UK was absolute hell. Hated every minute of it. Had to share a share a dorm with 11 other stinking blokes and uh i shudder to th- sort of think back on it everyone everyone bullied each other we were all horrible to each other um the older boys bullied the younger guys and, and the younger guys bullied each other and it was just a miserable experience uh quite character building though and um i missed home dreadfully i was homesick for the, the entire time very quiet barely spoke uh, everybody called me boring because i was so dull and quiet <laughs> and that really affected my confidence for, for sure. Um, but it got better through through the years and, and I began to enjoy it towards the end and started kind of um, doing impressions of the teachers and things like that and, and um, making a bit more of a name for myself, so you could say. But um, that that definitely contributed to a bit of sort of social anxiety through through my through my years and uh, that's been something that I've been constantly working at and still still not entirely there yet. So that, that's why self-confidence and anxiety tends to be a focal point for the stuff that I write about. And it seems to be making a bit of an impact with, with my readers um, because, because of my direct experience, I suppose, that, that does help. And it's been a, a topic that I've been constantly thinking about how to, how to address and how to fix. And I'm, I'm a, a hell of a lot better than I was. So that was boarding school. That was five years in a pretty posh UK boarding school, um, mostly mostly quite difficult to be honest, and, and as I said, missed home. 
Then I got to about 18 and had to decide between uh, do I want to study geography or art at university? And um, I, I had enjoyed both subjects a lot. I, I loved art. I was always a drawer, always very good at art and good at, you know, um, sketching stuff. And the teachers were always like, wow, you're pretty good. And I also enjoyed geography a lot. I don't know. I was, I was drawn to the study of volcanoes and earthquakes and that kind of stuff. And I always loved that. So I had to decide between the two. And because I thought art might be a little bit less sort of professional and I had fewer options, at least I, uh, I assumed at the time I, I would have fewer options with what I could do with art going forward, I decided to take the sensible option and did geography at UCL in London for three years. And my, my recollection, I mean, my memory of it now is just, is I can't remember much of what I learnt. <laughs> I spent a lot of the time in the pub with my friends, a lot of beer involved, and um, I came out of it without much of an idea of what I could do with it. So I decided to do a master's degree in real estate. I had, uh, up until that point, been enjoying various property programs uh, like Grand Designs and Property Ladder with Sarah Beanie. Um, I look back on those days with, with, with fondness, actually. But anyway, getting back to the point, I decided to do real estate. It was a part-time course which allowed me to work my first job in a property uh, Estates Gazette. It was a sort of property magazine where you did loads of research and I had to call up uh, real estate companies every day and ask them for their their stats on, on what they were building and stuff like that in London. But that, that gave me the opportunity to get back into illust uh, into art which I had missed I hadn't had any opportunity in the in the previous four years for doing any arty stuff and I had been reading the four hour work week which I keep mentioning in various other podcasts and you're probably sick, sick to death of it but the, the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss I had read that and thought wow it's it is possible to make a passive income earning money while you sleep with with some value that you've put up up on the web or something that people can buy or whatever it is and I decided to make use of my um, illustration stuff well to be honest I hadn't had I didn't have any illustrations but I decided to make use of a site called iStock Photo which is a place where you can upload your art illustrations where people buy and they pay you royalties and they can buy this many thousands of people can theoretically buy the same piece over and over again so I put loads of art on there and I went through a very steep learning curve involving putting a, an illustration up and I was, I was using um, Adobe Illustrator at the time and I'm not going to say it but I, I, did, I did not pirate that copy and I was using videos that I got online so it was a completely self-taught process and I had to submit those pieces through various inspectors on, on the site who would take a look at it and I would get loads and loads of rejections but I was so grateful now looking back on those rejections because it really fine-tuned uh, my working style and and not to mention the fact that when you put the stuff on the on the site to sell you have people either buying it or not and the stuff that tended to sell would would give me direct instant feedback about the kinds of illustrations that was commercially successful um, so that was a really really useful learning experience that got me from completely um, useless and, and out of the know about illustration into into a fairly accomplished illustrator within a couple of years. I added about 350 illustrations and it turned into quite a good move because it was paying for my, my rent in my, my London apartment at one point which was pretty sweet and it also started attracting various clients who found me through that site and that's what gave me the, the confidence I guess to jump from my re research job and, and just sort of say goodbye to the real estate, say goodbye to geography and everything else that had come before and just jump headfirst into running my own illustration business. I hadn't really had any, I didn't have any savings. I just jumped into it and the, the little income I was building from iStock really helped as well. And I just, I just went for it. And over the next several years, I... I did okay. I did. I got some decent clients, and and but I really had to learn very very quickly again about what I should be doing to market my stuff to avoid those periods that I experienced so often of complete famine and being you know on the red line and um, not not knowing when the next um, job would come and and not knowing whether I'd be pay, be able to pay the next rental bill. So that meant I got pretty knowledgeable pretty quickly about how marketing worked and how to run a business. And thanks to, again, what I'd learned from that 
uh, four hour work week book, it got me thinking about how I could make use of all those things that I was learning. So I decided to put together an ebook called 10 Steps to Powerful Self Promotion for Creatives. Long, long title. And I, I made use, and then to, to sell it, I decided to set up a blog and I called it Red Lemon Club out of the blue because it sounded kind of funky and fun. And I, was, I used that blog to gather a, a mailing list as quickly as I could. And I sold about 200 copies within a, a couple of weeks, which was pretty sweet, through that blog. But this was back in the day when blogging was still fairly... I mean, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't brand new, but it was still... There weren't many other sites doing what I was doing, so... It helped to. I mean, it was. It helped to be fairly new in that industry, the creative world, and the you know the marketing side. I was one of the first to do that, and so it was fairly easy to get people to to jump on board with that. So that was that was a, a nice little success, and and I've been running Red Lemon Club since then, really. So I've been doing a combination of illustration work for various clients. I've worked with the BBC, Craft, Google. I had a stint with. When I was living in Japan, I was working with Google Plus on their team for a little bit, which was a really cool experience. And I did work for, I mean, I've done loads of stuff, Saatchi and Saatchi, Mars, and so the, the list goes on. So I, I've continued to write for Red Lemon Club since then. That was around 2009 when I set Red Lemon Club up. And it's brought loads of opportunities from... Uh, speaking gigs. I did a talk in Tokyo, and I've done talks for Off Festival in Barcelona, and AO, the AOI Association of Illustrators in London, and stuff in Vietnam and all over the place. And it has introduced me to one-to-one -one coaching, and I've done everything I can to um, train my my followers as, as well as as well as I, as I can. And for the last few years, I've taken. Um, a back seat from the, the coaching and have gone more into the writing and I've really enjoyed the last couple of years of going quite deep and experimental into the writing side um, <clears throat> but I guess there's been a bit of a there's going to be a bit of a change with this podcast layered onto the writing and there's all kinds of, of things in the works still I have a product coming out a new planner that I'm really excited about introducing and I have a shop that I'm about to release, and probably by the time you're you're listening to this, it's going to be already up there. And I'm just just excited to keep um, keep expanding the Red Lemon Empire. Really, uh, I hope that I've given you enough enough there. I'm sure I'll have a, an opportunity to reveal tidbits about me in in upcoming episodes. But that was a quick overview of how Red Lemon Club came to be and how I sort of started in you know geography of all places and ended up as an illustrator and now much more of a full-time blogger i do a bit of illustration stuff um i was lucky enough to make a really clever slash stupid investment in bitcoins a while ago so that's that's helped me um put a lot more content out than i otherwise would have been able to i think i would have been doing much more illustration stuff in the last year so i'm really really grateful for that and i hope bloody bitcoin prices continue to go up so that's that's helped a lot and and here i am and i plan to do this at least three times a week it might even be more than that it probably might be less than that but um i hope that you guys are going to hold me accountable a little bit for getting these these podcasts out so in terms of what is going to be put out for content tell me what you guys want for a start where i want to start is answering questions I'm, I'm i'm really excited to use this opportunity this platform um, to to answer questions more directly and go into a little bit more depth with individual questions from from individual subscribers and fans, and so that's that's going to be a focal point for sure. But I also want to use this as a as a chance to get other people on board, get 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 a chance to chat with with other creative minds and other entrepreneurs and and anyone from any relevant field that is going to help red lemons people like you and me be able to better focus stay motivated market themselves better run more efficient businesses make make more side income all those all those things that help us thrive as creative people 
Um, and I think that's that's going to be exciting because it's just it can't just be me the whole time talking, talking because I there is a limit to the amount of, I know and the amount of experiences I've had. So I'm really excited to bring on various guests and you are free to suggest names again as i said that the the focus will be on ultimately its self development but it also will go into a little bit more of the technical side and and go a little bit more detailed uh for how we can push our businesses forward and i I've, I've talked about all this stuff so i'm repeating myself so that's what i want to be going into and as i said this is all non this is all not scripted and i haven't really got a crystal clear plan i don't think it's wise to have too clear a plan for how things are going to develop with this show because who knows i will probably learn something interesting with every show that i do and um change tack a little bit maybe maybe it stays consistent we'll see a lot of a lot of the feedback i want to see from you guys so that i can i can tweak and make this show the best it, it best it can be but i know that i want to i want to keep this going and i'm really excited to see what you guys think and um let me know if you find my monotonous tones monotonous or whether you actually like what you're hearing as well so that's always always useful um i know that i do um i, I um too often and i need to work on that but as i said my speaking style should continually improve and um it'll be interesting when i have another dynamic with someone else to talk to opposite me as well so that's going to be very exciting i think i'm going to leave it there for this for this first episode and and in the next one i'm going to answer a specific question and see see how long that goes on for whether that only requires a few minutes or if it's if it requires a longer show maybe i'll get someone in within the next week or two some some new guest and uh, again let me know who you think are some good names in the meantime i would recommend you go over to redlemonclub.com and read read the most recent article if you haven't already the shop should be up by the time you hear this if it's not hold on i will be giving out uh, lots of interesting red lemon club themed merchandise and some of my prints are going to be put up on there i'm going to be adding new products all the time but the big one the big one is the book of lift. Now you want to be you want to be thinking about this one. This is this is an interesting product. This is based on a blog post I put out about a year ago in 2017. I wrote a post about all the questions that I ask myself every morning before I start the day. These are questions that range from what are my longer term goals, what are my um priority tasks that I need to do today, how am I going to start the day? positively how am i who who am i going to reach out to today to move my network forward a little bit what am i going to do today to to push myself out of my comfort zone all these questions that narrow your focus down to the things that really matter the things that will uh, make the biggest difference in your life and the things that will lead to the lead to the biggest results these are all fine tuned in in this post which i then turned into a book and i've called it the book of lift and i've added a little a, a few extra bits to it like a note like notes areas and calendars and stuff like that. That that will be available soon. So keep your eye on that. I would love for you to take a look at it. I'm expecting some tweaks with that over time, but I think I'm I'm pretty happy with the with the book in its current form. I've been using it for a little over 9 months now. I use it every morning. Um except on those days when I don't, when I'm really lazy and I just am not in the mood. But I to be honest, whenever I have used it, it just channels my thinking right down. And this is a problem I've had for so long. It's like so many things i could do so many cool shiny things i could chase so many videos i could watch so many interesting new books to read i mean it's it's endless and it's becoming more more profound and more significant in the modern age i think it's just so many things we could do and just not having that that focus and that ability to decide without feeling that you're making the wrong decision the the book will give you will give you it in question form so that you don't have to sort of double double thing you just answer the question get it done and then then at the end of the the process you have a list in front of you of all the things you need to be getting on with that day that matter the most to you and it's all it's all down to what matters to you it's not not anyone else's rules it's your own your own sense of what brings you to life and what's going to move you forward most effectively so i'm really excited about putting that book out book of lift i will give you 
the details about that in the next episode. Thank you guys for listening. Greetings from a humid and very wet Bangkok evening. I'm going to go now and get some food. Do make sure that you have subscribed to this podcast, wherever it is that you are listening from. This will be on numerous, a few different platforms. Like it if you can. Do all the uh, the sharey stuff. Make sure your friends know about this if you enjoyed it, if you got something from this. Make sure if you have a question for me, I am right here for you. I will read my emails. Send, send them to alex at redlemonclub.com. Go to redlemonclub.com right now if you are not a subscriber to the email list because the newsletter I put out will alert you of new articles that come out that you might find fulfilling and motivating. Uh, I know that many other people do. And uh, it'll also be an opportunity for you to be notified of, of any new podcasts that come out, any shiny, nice, new, fun products that I'll be putting out. And I don't send that many emails out so you will not be bombarded but it's definitely worth worth being on there also there's one other thing that i've just recently set up which is a slack chat forum for red lemon club um followers so i have set up through through the slack app which is a which is a, a means to chat with other people on a kind of a nice nicely designed online forum this is a place where I have gathered lots of creative minds and entrepreneurs and people. It's about 100 strong so far, but it's going to be growing. And the exciting thing is is that it's um, split into different channels that will be dedicated to a different craft, so whether it be video making, writing, visual arts, productivity, marketing itself. Um, there's even one for the blockchain. So we've got a, we've got a blockchain channel where people are talking about the future of the cryptocurrencies and blockchain and how that can affect the creative industries and it's really fascinating but it's cool because you can talk to not only people in your own bubble but people outside of your creative sphere as well and they're all brought together there which is which is really exciting so go to redlemonclub.com forward slash slack and you'll be able to sign up for that i i do go through all the applications to take a look make sure that you aren't a complete nutcase okay uh, looking forward to seeing you there and um, again follow like and um, give me feedback looking forward to, to talking to you guys in the next one see you later